some point in your life have entered a dark room and wondered, where the hell is the meeting? It's supposed to be right here. It's kind of like trying to get a presentation to run that somehow wouldn't just run. Not until you press that right button. Not until you flip the switches. And everything just suddenly seems to make sense once again. So for me, I thought graduating from high school in Singapore would be that one moment. That one moment of realization. Well, it wasn't. Graduating from Singapore, a high school in Singapore is exactly what it sounded like, graduating from high school. I didn't know what I was going to do. I knew what my friends were going to do. They were going to study abroad in the USA. And you know, if enough people do something, it's got to be right. That's what I thought. And so I decided, you know, maybe I'd go overseas too, I'd go to the US and I would study finance. I wanted to be part of the business world because, you know, the business world sounded pretty hip. So everyone's entitled to their dream school. And I had my dream school over here. You know, I would, there, were, there were a couple of other schools that I would consider going to as well. Like my brother's school, for example. You know, it's a pretty good school, I'd say. And so I decided, I made up my mind, and I decided to So as I was saying, okay, I decided to give this whole college admission game a shot. I would register for the SATs, I would do the Kaplan practice exams, I would do the Princeton review practice exams, and I would take the SAT, and bam, here we go. This is my score, 1420. Well, it was a good score. It was definitely not astronomical. And I thought, you know, Jervis, you definitely could do better than that. And so I gave it a second shot. Bam, there you go. And now what can you say about this? Well, in short, I would say that I improved. <laughs> <laughs> so then I thought, you know, maybe this whole SAT thing isn't all that it's made up to be. It's not that accurate of a gauge of my true aptitude. I was going to wait, you know, uh, maybe a year or so and take the new version of the SAT. Maybe that would be more accurate. So that, well, that's exactly what I did. I had two years in the Army to do, you know, basically do nothing. And I, I gave... <laughs> I gave the SATs my, a third shot, and wow, check that out, big improvement, huh? But was it really? Turns out, by adjusting the score down to the former base value of 1600, there was no change. So if I were playing baseball, this is the point where I would head back to the dugout, put my, put my head in my hands, and just give up. But I wasn't playing baseball. I was playing my own game, and I had four tracks. <laughs> now at this point too, if this were a movie, this would be the, the point at which the protagonist comes to the fore, that Rocky Balboa moment, the moment when he breaks out. But this isn't a movie, this is my life. <laughs> and so at this point in my life, after taking the SATs for four times, I realized something. Something that, you know, I didn't quite like. Maybe those 1,600 SAT scores were just on a different playing field. I wasn't at their level. It was a tough pill to swallow, but I swallowed it. I was second best. I was the first run up, and I had to live with that. So the college letters came rolling in, 